Një dita gjithve, uh, unë kam derin sot që ta nis një seri, do të të levizja për të nis një seri të debateve, uh, fillimisht me ambasadorën Jacobson, e, për cënë në folje falendrën shumë për angazhimin e saj në, në shtetë ndërtimin tonë, pra. Uh, kjo seri e debateve, po uh, organizohet, uh, thuje se prej viti 2011, uh, në cilën ne kemi të nëtuar që të cilim uh, debatet hapra, si që edhe kemi uh, quajtur, uh, në mes uh, njerëzve prezent në Kosovë të kryesisht të të prezinsis ndërkomtare, të ambasadorve, të njerëzve tjerë, me shus një civile me ju të ndruar media, ku ne edhe pozitim paka shumë temat për si cilin të fëtuar, për si cilin forum. Si që mund të akini par dhe në njëftimin për media, si që mund të akini par dhe ftesin për ata që kanë qenë të fëtuar personalisht, folit të në tonë që sëtë të trajtoj tri qështje, me cilat konsiderojmë që janë jarëzakonisht të rëndësishme për zhvillimet e përgjithshme politike, shoqnore, ekonomike. Qështja parë, me cilën format i debatit pra është kështu, kemi njësur me paka shumë dialogën fetar ose tolerancën fetare në Kosovë. Qështja dytë është aja për cilën ne potentojmë të diskutojmë me ambasadorën Jacobson, është qështja luftimit korupcionit dhe pasojat eshte të ndërtimit përgjithshme për shkak të nivellit lartë të korupcionit, dhe qështja tretë, ne nuk mund t'i i kemi ndërshta, edhe qështja se tretë ka të bëj me zjedhët e të të qërshorit dhe me zhvillimet politike për të pëthuaj se në këta 5 muaj të fundit. Ambasadorë e Gjekopsën do të flasë dikon për se se dhe në qështje dhe dhe në 15 minuta, pas taj diskutime do të hapet nga pjesë marsit dhe media. Ambasadorë, falemderit shumë për prezencën tuaj në forumet e folit. Shpresoj që do të kemi një debat pra i cili do tjetë prej naturave në i hapun. Ashtu si që e keni prezentuar edhe në Twitter në Brom, debat pa doroshka. Prej smarësit, vetëm edhe një qështë, ndërsa pjesë smarësit cilë përdorin Twitter, mund të përdorin, do të mund të sitojnë nga këtu, dhe të përdorin në hashtagun fol hapur, Kjo është një fardoj njërë publicitetit tonë. Ambasadore, do të njësim me tolerancën fetare. Kove të fundit, ose në vitit e fundit, kemi pasur disa probleme sa i përket dialogut fetarë, ndo shta edhe tolerancës fetarë në Kosovë. Ne paka shumë është thënë në stërtën që kemi një tolerancës fetare, mirë po disa zhvillime në kohë të fundit, do një ndinë nëse kanë cënuar së do pak këtë tolerancë fetare dhe ku na qënë fakti që dhe ne si Kosovës, si shteti Kosovës, jemi pozicionuar në natyrshëm në aleancën anti-ISIS, do të të aleancën globale, si shini edhe zotimet e shtetit Kosovës në relacion me këta. Pra, aspektin shosnur, tolerancë adhe ashtë cënuar si e tilë dhe angazhimet e shtetit Kosovës në aleancën globale. Falemderit të njerë për... Falemderit të njerë për mundësin të të flasë me ju sot. I'm going to speak in English, because it's easier for me. Kosovo has one really strong advantage when it comes to religious tolerance, and that is a long history of religious tolerance, of people of different faiths living together, celebrating together, uh, and conducting their normal lives. Uh, I don't even like this word tolerance so much. It means you're putting up with something that you really don't like. I prefer to use the expression respect for diversity. In the time that I've been here in Kosovo, Kosovo has made a lot of efforts to build religious dialogue, interfaith dialogue, including um, several conferences, uh, some with the support of the United States government, uh, one that I went to last week that brought together leaders of the great religions in Kosovo uh, to talk about how they can work together and how they can work with the government to improve the environment for the practice of faith in Kosovo. Uh, I think some of the troubles that you refer to are not really issues of religious intolerance. I think they have more to do with inter-ethnic relations. Uh, there is a complex historical legacy here in Kosovo. 
Uh, and I know that uh, people of goodwill, people of faith, will be able to get back to that mutual understanding that they had before the wartime. Uh, Kosovo is a multi-ethnic country. It has rich religious traditions uh, from Islam, a sort of European, uh, modern, tolerant form of Islam from the uh, Serbian Orthodox Church, which has some um, UNESCO recognized World Heritage Sites here. Uh, with regards to the Catholic communities, with regards to the evangelicals, a small Jewish population, et cetera. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, it is, it's a complex uh, mixture, but I hope that moving forward we'll see more support for uh, religious organizations. Uh, for example, a law allowing them to register as religious organizations and more of the interfaith dialogue that the government has been supporting thus far. When I talk about new legislation, of course, that uh, means new government, new assembly. But you said we're going to talk about that third, so I, yeah. will, uh, I will wait for that one. <coughs> si shiet do thot prej politikës të pakte në Amerikane, uh, një kemi parë një letër që ka orë në drejtim të Kosovës prej uh, sekretarit uh, Kerry, i cili paka shumë falendrën edhe Kosovën për rështimin pra të thash, thash natyrshëm në lancën anti, anti ISIS si mund të kuptohet nga politika jashtë me Amerikane? Kosovo is really uh, to be congratulated and has been congratulated by my government and many others for taking this issue of uh, extremism very seriously. Uh, this sort of form of radical Islam is not a traditional Kosovo farm of Islam. This is something that's been uh, imported, brought in from elsewhere. Uh, and I think it's, it's terrible when young people are attracted to an ideology that causes them to leave their families and to go and fight in a war with groups that we know are, are terrorists. I think that many in Kosovo were shocked last summer by the brutal pictures of beheadings <laughs> Uh, and also shocked by the death of so many people in Kosovo fighting in these foreign conflicts. So I'm uh, very pleased that the government has taken strong steps to, uh, to investigate and arrest those who are responsible for recruiting people and sending them to fight in these foreign conflicts, uh, for paying attention to hate speech, uh, for paying attention to NGOs that may be bringing in foreign money to promote a sort of radical Islam that's not traditional in Kosovo. But of course the issue of uh, Islamic extremism and foreign fighters is not just a law enforcement issue. It's an issue that requires a whole of society response. What is it that attracts people to this kind of radical ideology in the first place? That has to be better understood. Uh, government needs to address uh, comprehensive policy for countering violent extremism, but also those societal drivers uh, such as poverty, lack of ep economic opportunity, education, that lead people to believe that they don't have another choice to have a successful, fulfilling life other than to go and fight in Iraq and Syria. And this is something that we'd like to see uh, Kosovo as a whole do more of in the future, and we're prepared to do our part to help. Duke respektuar edhe kohën, po dalin ndërsa në qështin e dytë që është pashtu aqërën së shme se sa para dhe se sa ndërsa të tjetë edhe treta. Qeveria Amerikane ka qenë, ka investuar në fushat të ndryshme, në aspektin institucional, të shuqri civile dhe të zhvidimit ekonomik ndërsa, në mënyrë direkte, për mes projekteve të ndryshme. Aja që farë dëshrojmë të ndëgjojmë këtu, ndërsa të diskutojmë pas taj, është në gjitha raportet ne po përtërtizojmë paka shumë si vendi cili ka një nivel të korupcionit shumë të naltë. Nëse bëjmë edhe kranësimi prej vitit në vitë, nuk është që gjejmë do një përparim të durë. Sa e pengën, do të të korupcioni, edhe qeverisja jo mirë, në këtë kuptim zhvillimin e vendit edhe cilat do të ishin, ndoshta dhe sugjerimit tuaja si ambasadorë. Well, it's a very good question. Of course, corruption is a huge problem here, and it may be the biggest impediment to Kosovo's long-term sustainability and economic uh, existence, really. And uh, it's, a, it's a widespread societal problem. We hear the politicians talking about it a lot. Politicians pointing their fingers at each other. He's corrupt. No, he's corrupt. Uh, I think there's plenty of evidence of corruption to go around uh, 
the whole political spectrum. But it's not just politicians. You know, it's people who engage in corrupt activity as well. And I would include in that any voter who went to the polls in June and rather than voting for the best candidate, voted for somebody that had promised him some benefit, a job, uh, money, whatever it is. Uh, uh, corruption is a two-way street. Uh, it's seen here in terms of uh, government procurement, going to politically connected businesses rather than to the business that might have the lowest price or the best offer. It's seen certainly in terms of jobs. And uh, when we talk about the environment that attracts people to extremism, uh, the high level of unemployment among youth is one of those uh, things. Young people feel, and it's probably true, that unless you're connected to a political party, you can't get a job. And it shouldn't be that way. Uh, that is not a path that's going to take Kosovo to a prosperous European future. In terms of what we do, uh, we've tried to provide uh, a lot of training and equipment on the law enforcement side uh, through our police engagement with ISITAP, through our work with the prosecutors, through OPDAT, through our work helping to draft new legislation, new criminal code, new criminal procedures code, through our work with the judges and the courtrooms uh, to build capacity. But in the end, we can't want it more than you do. So it requires, I think, all of society, civil society, voters, uh, media, to hold elected officials accountable for their action and to not engage in uh, the politics of corruption even when it might be a benefit for you. Because until the whole country changes its mindset to corruption, we're not going to make progress on this, on this really terrible impediment to Kosovo's development. Besoj që do të ketë edhe debat pas ta edhe për këtë qështje, po i bëjmë pes muj kur kemi bajtur zhjede, do të tëtë pas dy dite, i bëjmë pes muj kur kemi bajtur zhjede të konsideruar si të lira dhe ferë, do të tëtë para të zhjede cëllat nuk ishin një kontestim masiv si që kishin pasur në zhjede të para 4 viteve, ndërku që ne jemi ngërthyr në një debat edhe ligjore dhe politik, edhe kushtetus, edhe të drejtës e deputetve, ne nuk kemi ande kuvend të konstuar, nuk kemi ande qeveri, dhe si pas debatëve të tanishme, do të të pak gjasa po ka që ne të besojmë se kur edhe mund të kryo në institucionet, institucionet qëndrore. Jemi në fund vitë të ese, dhe i gjithë debati tjetër që është shëndruar, tashme është tek një tendens të kriza financiare. Në Po ashtu ka qenë gëgja shumë për një pjesë është konsideruar inkurajuse, fakti që personat ndërkomtarë këtu të vendosur në Kosovë, pra njerë që kanë edhe edhe ndikim, nuk kanë qenë të involvuar si që i kemi parë në të kaluarën. Nëse dikur kemi pasur edhe kritika sepse ishin paka shumë të involvuar, sot kemë kritika të njashme sepse nuk janë të involvuar. Si e shihni gjithë këtë proces pas të të shurit edhe si e shihni prezencën dërkomtarët përfshirë edhe të ambasatës amerikanë në Prishtinë, po jo vetëm edhe të personavë tjerë, zyrtarëve tjerë në dërkomtarën Kosovë? It's a very good question. I think I can say that I, like probably all of you, am very frustrated by the extremely slow pace of government and assembly formation. One could say a glacial pace. One of my colleagues at the embassy said, it's like watching a glacier melt. Uh, we can have lots of debates, we can have lots of discussions, but the time has come for action. Uh, there are many legislative and government priorities facing the country right now. As you mentioned, one of them is financial crisis. We're already too late uh, in terms of moving forward with the budget. Uh, salaries are at risk. Kosovo, in fact, faces government bankruptcy if it doesn't get its act together on the budget with a new assembly and a new government in, in, the, in the coming days. Uh, there are very important pieces of legislation that are waiting. Some of them requires two-thirds of the assembly to approve. For example, the special court, uh, Kosovo armed forces, but there's other important legislation as well, such as uh, the foreign fighters legislation and this whole effort for economic development fighting corruption, rule of law, it's all on hold. It's been on hold for five months, which is far too long. 
And I think the time for political stunts is over. Uh, what do I mean by political stunts? We have a situation now where, based on the Constitution, based on the Constitutional Court, some things are clear. One thing that's clear is that PDK has the right to nominate the Speaker of the Parliament. And I know that the coalition has an agreement that sees Issa Mustafa as the Speaker and Ramush Haradinai as the Prime Minister. But in fact, PDK gets to pick the Speaker. So that agreement, uh, I don't see how it's going to work. But calling people to the streets uh, because that agreement is not working is a political stunt that doesn't move forward anything. On the other side, another political stunt could be, let's say if the, uh, if the political parties did decide uh, to all support a PDK-nominated speaker for the parliament, then we would expect a parliamentary session to be called so that the parliament can be constituted and that so we can move forward to the next step of government formation. Refusing to call an assembly session when there's agreement on who the speaker should be is a political stunt that doesn't get us anywhere. Uh, I know that there are lots of meetings going on right now uh, within the coalition. Uh, I find it very strange myself that you've got two major groups that aren't talking to each other. Uh, this is not a good model. Sooner or later, regardless of who emerges as the government, who emerges as the Speaker of the Parliament, these people are going to have to work together to achieve these complicated tasks that lie ahead of Kosovo. And you don't do it by sitting in separate corners and not talking to each other. In terms of the international role, people have asked all along, why don't you get involved? You know, early days, why don't you come with the envelope? Uh, somebody asked me the other day, where's the envelope? And I said, well, you're not going to like it because it only has women's names in it. Uh, I don't have an envelope, and I shouldn't have an envelope. Kosovo is not a colony of the United States. Kosovo is not a ward of the international community. Kosovo is an independent country. And if it's going to succeed, Kosovo's political leaders, the people that you voted for and elected, are going to have to learn the art of building political consensus. And sometimes that requires compromise. Sometimes that requires making deals. Sometimes it's messy. But this is what you have to do in politics. Uh, I'll give you one example in, from my own government. You know, we had elections this week, uh, the midterm elections. And uh, the Republicans have now taken control of the Senate in the next Senate, and they already had control of the House while the Democrats have control over the White House. Uh, but we have a big agenda as a country going forward. So President Obama went on television last night and said, I am going to work with these Republicans to advance the country's agenda. And politicians here need to do that as well. Uh, we've debated. We've uh, gone back and forth for far too long. Five months is a long time. And now it's time for the politicians themselves to find a way out of the situation that they themselves have created. Uh, I think the president is playing an appropriate role in terms of calling people for meetings. She can't present a solution either. The solution has to come from the elected politicians. Um, I would hope that at some time in the near future, she would be able to call all the parties together. So far, they haven't been willing to meet and have a discussion together. Uh, not prejudging the outcome, not prejudging who forms the government, uh, uh, what an eventual governing coalition looks like, but to have a conversation to begin that work of working together that Kosovo needs if it's going to move forward. Po besoj që jen hap 3 qështje për cilat edhe mund ketë interesim të prezencës juaj, mundësisht të prezentohen i filimisht, nëse keni një koment, mund të takalej një minuqin dhe pytje. Falendrojmë ambasadorën për këto reflektime, për këto tri tema për cilat ne kemi zedhur, për zedhur në këtë forum. Do të ishte me interes që të mësë sa zhasëm në kuptimin e komentëve të gjata nëse ka pytje. Êshtë një mikrofon brapa, po është... Pajmë derit, se atin kërë 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 kër
nga kjo pjesë e tretë për zgjevjet, si të mesajë ishte i qartë, saj për këtë parlamentit, se kush si do të zhvillohet, pa ka shumë nga jo që ndë gjova, pytja ime me shumë të shkante në pjesën e dytë, nëse radizohet kriorë institut parlamenti, zidët krye parlamentare, si do të, si pas mendimi të juaj, si do të zhvillohet pjesë e dytë, e zhjedes qeverisë, a do të kemi prap një subjekti që ti do t'i rakoj dyherë, apo si e shini ju zgjidin në atë pjesin e dy, do të do të ketë mundësi kjo shumica parlamentare të merë një mandat, nëse herën e partë të shtonë për dëkëja të imi të zgjidin kërë ministrë. This process was clarified by the Constitutional Court in its July decision. It's clear that the president must give the first mandate to PDK to form a government and they have 15 days to form a government. If they are unsuccessful, the president must then consult with political party leaders and make a decision on the second mandater based on objective criteria. Nobody can prejudge that process in advance because nobody knows what the political constellation will look like at that time. The president has been very clear about what her objective criteria are. It's not just the numbers to form a government. It's also uh, inclusiveness, including minorities. It's commitment to Kosovo's European path. It is commitment to continuing to implement and further the dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia. These are all things that she'll be looking at when she decides if the time comes who gets the second mandate. Various uh, politicians have asked for guarantees. For example, if PDK is unsuccessful in the first time, can the president guarantee that the coalition will get the second chance? There's no guarantees in advance. Um, nobody knows what the coalition exactly will look like, for example. Um, we've heard it said from Serbska List, for example, that they will not work in a government that includes Vetvendosia. I think Vetvendosia's position on the dialogue between Kosovo and Serbia is well known. So that's one question. Another question is who would be prime minister? Uh, right now, the way that uh, LAN is set up, Issa Mustafa would become the speaker and Ramush Haradinaj would become the prime minister. But we know that in the absence of LAN getting the speaker job, that uh, that Constellation might not work. I have heard from people in LDK that given uh, the relative strength in parliament that uh, LDK should have the prime minister, not AAK, uh, if this coalition forms the government. But there's no guarantee of where that's going to be. So the only thing the president can do, and in fact what she's mandated to do by the constitution and the constitutional court, is to have a series of, of consultations and then decide who best meets those objective criteria that she's outlined. I support her in that process. I think she's uh, being very careful, uh, very cautious. She's talking to everybody. She's taking everything on board. Um, but I, I wouldn't think that she uh, could make any decision or guarantees in advance because that would not be in uh, accordance with her constitutional responsibility. Uh, Hello, I'm Mark Kolekis from RTK2. Uh, I will rewind on the first topic. Uh, uh, we're aware that in a recent, recent time there was happening a lot of in incidents uh, after the game Serbia and Al Albania. The, in the incidents won't happen in, in Serbia, also in Kosovo. In Serbia, the condemns, uh, uh, I mean, the perpetrators were arrested, but uh, the, the fact is that everyone judged and condemned that incident on, on, in Kosovo, but none of them were faced in, 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 a, in, a, uh, in, a, in a justice system. I mean, that's happened also in a Dachani monastery uh, where we have graffiti and stuff. Also, the official condemned that, that violent acts, but uh, none of them also uh, were faced in the courts. So what, what does this tell us? There is, are there any political and good will to, uh, to
face those perpetrators uh, to the justice system? Uh, or is it enough just to co condemn those violent acts? Thank you for your question. Um, as I travel around the country, I often visit returnee communities, including these that have been repeatedly attacked in Klina and Istag. And I'll be honest, I think it's appalling that no one has ever been arrested or convicted for these crimes. Uh, the people there who are being attacked feel alone. Uh, they don't feel that their government is interested in protecting them. And this is uh, not the way it should be. I will tell you, I have raised this issue twice this week alone with the Prime Minister, also with the Minister of Interior, and with our ISITAP program that works with police. We are encouraging the Chief of Police, uh, when he's back in Kosovo next week, to visit these communities, to sit down with these people, to talk about the needs for policing so that we can actually find out who's doing these repeated crimes and arrest them and stop them. With regards to the situation at the Dachani Monastery, um, I am glad that everybody has condemned the graffiti attack. I was uh, very positive about the fact that the Kosovo Islamic community visited the monastery to show their solidarity. Uh, I think that also needs to be investigated. Investigations are ongoing with ULEX, with K4, with Kosovo police, and I hope the perpetrators will be found for that as well, uh, because people have to learn together to live together in peace, and this kind of attack doesn't help. Um, the idea that's been suggested that we can't rule out that the monks did it themselves, I think is insane, or that K4 or KP did it themselves is insane. Uh, we need a real law enforcement solution to address the people that perpetrate these acts, but we also need a societal solution uh, that commits societies and municipalities to protecting all of their people, regardless of what their ethnicity is. And I think it's a central government responsibility, but also a municipal responsibility. And it's one where civil society can and does play an important role. Thank you for the question. I'm sorry, I'm Ardian Gazieri, a journalist from Clan Kosovo Television. Uh, I would like to know what do you suggest to get over the situation, uh, political situation? I think that politicians now need to get down to the hard work of communicating, of collaborating, of finding a potential way forward where nobody's going to get 100% of what they want. Everybody has to give something up. Probably everybody has to get something. And I don't see how this can be resolved without some form of communication between the parties. When you have land that wants to form a government and you have PDK, which gets at a minimum the speaker position in parliament and the first mandate to build a government, I find it um, very unproductive that they don't talk to each other. And I would encourage them all to uh, accept an invitation by the president to meet together and move forward. Uh, I'm not suggesting that this would lead to any particular constellation of parties. Um, to be honest, it's not uh, up to me uh, who forms the next government. Uh, I will work, my country will work with any government that is legitimately formed in accordance with the law. Uh, we would, of course, like to see one that is stable, inclusive, and productive, rather than one that's at odds and divided. But that's really up to the political leaders themselves uh, to figure out. And I will tell you, uh, for a long time from Washington, I was getting the question, you know, what's going on over there? Why is this taking them so long? What's the problem? And what I'm hearing lately is silence. Nobody's asking about Kosovo. People are losing interest. And this is the most dangerous thing for Kosovo. As a young democracy which needs friends, which has relied on the international community, which will always be able to rely on American friendship and support, now is the time that Kosovo as an independent country needs to show it can do its own work. Otherwise, the attention of the international community is naturally drawn elsewhere. Uh, this time you put uh, Michenset in the leader match, I thought you uh, 
për shkallën e lartë të korupcionit, në të senë po dyshot se janë të imbëdvuar dhe shumë politikanë. Në anën tjetër e thatë se dhe jetë e përdishme që të tarve të Kosovës, për kasë ishte dhe madje dhe gjetja një vendit të punës, është ndërgjidur me politikanë. Të më thonë, Kosovë kemi dy gjendje, atë të blokut, cila ka shumë misën parlamentare në kuvend, dhe që po thyrët se kjo qeveri se ka ka për shtetin, dhe kemi pëdokan që ka fituar po që se e marë pëdër kaja, apo bloku që vërisën e arshme, që ka do të fitoj dhe që farë do të kumbë Kosovë? Well, as I said in the beginning, when we talk about corruption, there is plenty of blame to go around. I know that the bloc has made a lot of political statements about PDK's long rule in Kosovo, about state capture, about uh, filling jobs with political supporters. I myself have seen instances where people have been put into jobs because of their political connections rather than their competence. Uh, I will remind one example of that is the Kosovo Privatization Agency. That's a story that you all know well from last year. But you can't blame one political party for this. I mean, let's look at the members of the bloc as well. Uh, we have the head of NISMA, who I believe is currently undergoing two trials for corruption. Uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, Vet Vendosia has brought some 70 cases against LDK in the municipality of Pristina for corruption. Uh, I know that senior levels of AAK have actually uh, been convicted of racketeering. So there's a tradition of political corruption here in Kosovo that goes back a long way and can't be pinned on any one person or any one party, or even on the political elite themselves. Because people that are on the receiving end of political largesse, whether it's in terms of contracts or jobs, are also culpable. What we need going forward, whoever forms the government, is a new commitment to not doing business in the old way. You as civil society, you as the media, the people of Kosovo need to demand that I can't demand that in the way that you can. We can try and help with uh, capacity development. We can help with education, with training, with equipment, with laws. But what's really required is political will to change on the part of the entire society. And that's something that you need to build, all of you together. And we'll be happy to help you however we can. Uh. Përshëndetje, jam Fitim Goshi, ka star prej kohës ditore. Ka adër ty në diskutimeve për të kalimin e ngëqet politik, është një parti politike, përkasës levizjave të vendojës, e cila nuk e ka përjashtuar asë mundësin e organizimit protestave se si një zgjide për të të kaluar këtë ngëqet institucional. A për kranë një protestat e dha janë zgjide e duar protestat e dhe së dyti futja levizjet vetë vendojës një koalicionin pas gjëdhore e ka zbejat për krajnë e faktorin të rkomtar well, it's not up to the international community which parties are in which coalition. Uh, let me be very clear about that. In terms of protest, peaceful protest is a right in democratic society. I will say I've had some personal experience with protest in Kosovo that hasn't turned out to be quite so peaceful. Uh, in any case, peaceful protests are not a substitute for political progress. And if a bunch of people come out on the street and say, you know, we don't like this decision or that decision, uh, it doesn't change the decision that's been issued by the Constitutional Court as to who gets to nominate the Speaker of the Parliament. So uh, if people want to engage in peaceful protest, in debate, I think that's fine. That's naturally part of democracy. But it's not a substitute for actually having the political leaders figure a way forward out of this impasse uh, that they have created for the last five months. Um, my name is Florina Duli. I come from Kosovo Stability Initiative. Uh, my question is uh, related to the widespread uh, perception of state, corrupt, uh, state capture in Kosovo and the, the role it, this has played in the formation of our government. What is your take on this? It's definitely a problem and it needs to change if Kosovo is going to advance. Um, as I said previously, 
Uh, it's not the fault of any one political party. It is a widespread practice that has occurred in this country for a long time, particularly with regards to contracts and uh, to jobs in government institutions. Uh, as I said at the beginning, this uh, widespread perception of corruption is one of the greatest obstacles to Kosovo's long-term sustainability. It is a disincentive to investment, both foreign and domestic. It is a disincentive uh, to Kosovo's aspirations for regional integration. I think as Kosovo moves forward on its European path, this issue of corruption and rule of law is the, the biggest piece of outstanding homework as the country wants to move towards Europe. And as I've said, we can help the law enforcement institutions. Uh, we can talk about this in schools, uh, but much more needs to be done by Kosovo as a society to change the way business has been practiced, the relationship between business and politics in Kosovo. <coughs> Sami reka prej organizatës Simpo, e këm një qasje që të tri temat shumë interesante me ko, po neve gjithve përna pret këtë tema e fundit për shka këtë nevojës edhe për zhvillim ekonomik, edhe për sundin të ligjit, edhe për lidhët me qasjën në korupcion. Zonja ambasadore tha që duhet një qasje e re e qëto qeverisje që vjenë edhe kërkesa treja të shoqërisë civile ndaj qeverisjes trej që do të vjenë në Kosovë. Një qasje, një mendim tjetër, një koncept tjetër. Si mundemi me pritë qasje të re me të njëtën form të qeverisjes? Pra, kemi pas këtë qeverisje, këto koalicione për shumë vite edhe kjo qasje ka vazhdu. A me ndoni që duhet me ndryshu edhe një pjesë e qeverisis, do të thëtë e jo të kemi gjithmonë koalicionet më dhaja edhe me rezultatet për e në të njejta. Me qenë se edhe në fillim me ta që Kosova ka kalu kohën e administrimit, nuk është koloni, është një shtetë, Duhet të ketë edhe një blok në shta tjetër opozitar që mundet me qenë edhe prej partive shqiptare edhe mundet me kanë me këtë pjesën me një qasit tjetër një që ka bloku sot. Nëse isha isha. Old dog can learn new tricks, is that? Yeah, yes. First of all, I would like to say that countries can change and can evolve. With this issue of corruption, I myself witnessed it in Latvia between 2000 and 2003, a country that had real problems with corruption, but was so committed to its European path that they were able to overcome them as a society. And it took buy-in from the political class, from the media, from civil society, from ordinary people, and it wasn't easy. And of course, there are still problems with corruptions in, in Latvia, but it's a totally different environment than it was when I first went there in 2000. So I believe that countries, that attitudes towards corruption can change. Uh, with regard to your question about can the same people govern differently, I want to be clear. I would like to see more young people getting into politics. I would like to see more women in politics at the local level. Uh, we don't see a lot of that. We don't see a lot of young activists or women activists leading uh, party branches for any political party. And for politics to serve people, it needs a constant refreshment, including participation by all the people that it serves, regardless of their age or their nationality or their political beliefs or their gender or anything else. Uh, so I think fresh blood, Fresh input, fresh ideas are important. Uh, we don't see enough of it here, so I'd like to see more going forward. Um, but I do believe if all of you hold them accountable, uh, then people who have currently been involved in politics are capable of moving forward as well, if there is political will to do so. I come and see me with the microphone. I'm going to ask you 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 to ask you
Drilona Sloni nga Agencia Lojme dhe Politiko. Zonja Gjekopsan, ju tha që dy bloqet politike duhet të ullen dhe të bisedoj njëra me tjetërën për gjetën e një zgjidhja. Ata duhet të gjenjë zgjidhën vetë. Mirë po bloku Lvan ka të reguar dje ka thënë, zotri Ramosh Haradina, që nuk janë të gachëm të ullen dhe të bisedoj me partin demokratiket Kosovës. Në anën tjetër për dëkë po mbanje që ndrem që duhet gjithmon të respektohet vullneti qytetarve dhe vendimi gjykatës kushtetuse. Pa ka shumë pozicionet janë shumë të larta të arrijet një marveshje. Këtë rast në qovë se nuk kemi një marveshje brenda dy jove, a duhet që presidentja të veproj dhe të shpall zgjidhët e reja. Falem dhe. Well, of course, in order for there to be new elections, there would either have to be a constituted assembly with 81 votes in favor of elections, or we would have had to have gone through these two processes of nominating the first mandator and the second mandator, and only with the failure of both of those will we go to elections. Those are the two ways that I know of today that we can go to elections. Um, right now, we don't have a constituted assembly that can uh, vote to go to elections, nor do we have uh, a process moving forward with the mandating of, uh, of the first and the second uh, party to form a government. So uh, elections, I mean, it's always sort of the last resort. My concern with elections is I don't really see that they will change the situation. Uh, what's likely to happen is it would be in the winter time. I think a lot of people in Kosovo are fed up with their elected officials. I see some heads nodding. Um, so that would mean that uh, participation would probably be lower. It would be cold. Um, I don't know what level of participation we would get from the north of Kosovo, and that was one of the great successes of June, is that people from the entire country took part in the elections. Um, and what would happen if we wound up with the same sort of rank ordering of parties? PDK, LDK, Vet Vendosia, AAK, you know, would NISMA make it past the threshold? I don't know, but elections in this regard unless there are some sort of different pre-election coalitions, are not going to change the result. And what I worry could happen is we could find ourselves in the spring still trying to put together a government uh, based on new elections that probably produce very similar kinds of results to the ones that we had in June. I worry that there would be more uh, of an incentive to fraud and violence if elections have to be repeated. Uh, naturally, if that's the way it goes, uh, we're prepared to support, as we always do, through monitors, through our own um, American monitors, through supporting uh, domestic civil society monitors. Uh, but a better solution would be for the political leaders to stop standing on the sort of all or nothing stances that they've taken and to find a way to move forward. Because you can't do all or nothing in politics. The only people that are going to suffer from that, the people that are going to lose, is the, the voters, the citizens. Since you said that the politics in Kosovo needs a refreshment, uh, did you mean that Hashim thought she has to, uh, has to move? I did not mean that. Out, out the way in order that fresh people create the institutions I of did not mean that at all. I don't want anybody to say that. It's not up to me to say what any individual politician uh, does vis-a-vis -vis his or her political career. When I talked about new faces in politics, I was talking about people coming in at the entry level, at the branch level, at the party level, uh, getting involved, younger people, women uh, involved in politics so that moving forward, uh, Kosovo has a cadre of new people that are prepared to take political responsibility in the future. Përshëndetje, Zonja Gjakupson, kam një pyti të shkurt për ju. Se është e një rolin e prezidentës në gëngërshim politikë, a është ajo subjektive në konsultimet e dretanishme me koalicionin dhe me PDK-në, sepse kemi një akuz nga koalicionin Vlanës, a është e jo subjektive dhe anon nga PDK-në? I think the, the president has been very uh, diligent and correct in her engagement with political parties. From the very beginning, she has said to the political parties that it's not up to her as the president, it's not her constitutional role 
to dictate a solution, and she has asked repeatedly for the political parties to make their own recommendations, their own proposals uh, for forward movement. So far, they haven't done so. Uh, I believe that the president's meetings with political party leaders probably, in all likelihood, have been similar to the ones that I have with political leaders. And uh, you know my embassy meets with uh, representatives of different political parties all the time. I myself regularly talk with Hashim Thachi, with Issa Mustafa, with Ramush Haradinai. Uh, and so far we've had five months of this position with uh, PDK saying, well, we won the election, we respect that, uh, the will of the voters and the constitutional court and the bloc saying, uh, we'll do anything to avoid Thachi III, the country needs to move forward, and Issa Mustafa will be the speaker, and Ramush Haradinai will be the prime minister. We, that's what we've had for five months, in summary. Uh, that's not working very well. Uh, so the president has attempted to call people all around the table together. So far, they haven't been willing to do that, but I think the time is, is here when, uh, if nobody has a better idea, uh, that's what they need to do. Kemi edhe për një pytje ku, nëse të tikush... Vesh edhe një pytje? Ok, seletin. Bën. Adit, doni ambasadore, nësë sot dhe mesajë ishte shumë i qartë, në duke të spa, ko në kuptova, saj përket dalin nga këtë krizë. Nësë është mesajë një cilin një për cilin edhe gjithë derve politikë në takimet e ju e të regota. Cila është arsuja që ata nuk dhe gjonë se e rrave? Pse nuk dhe projtë? Uh, why don't you ask them that question? <laughs> they will never answer to me. Ambassador, I don't have any pity for the people. I'm considering the people who are in the colony, and I'm still in power. I'm still in the middle of the meeting, and I'm still in the middle of the pse nuk ka këshilla mitësore dhe të si mitë, si partner, se si dilet nga kjo situatë. Pra, pse nuk ka nga prezenca e jua i këtu, nga ambasador tjerë, këshilla mitësore në kuptimin që edhe t'ju kalzot një rrugë se si të dilet nga situatë. Pse nuk intervenoni me fjalë matë hapën? Well, I think I have been full of friendly advice, including today. I think I have been shumë i hapër. Okay. Uh, and I will continue to be so. I, uh, I will continue to do my job in terms of meeting the political leaders and telling them that it's time to move forward. Uh, so civil society, the electorate, also needs to do the same thing. Um, I am one voice. Uh, I'm a loud voice. Uh, <laughs> but my, my message to the politicians has been clear. In fact, I could even say it in Albanian. Mas e dhi punen. Në këtë përfundim dhe të fjalis, unë po falenderoj jarëzokënit shumë ambasadorën Gjekupson, që ishte sot me ne, besojmë për të tri temat u dhan reflektime të rëndësishme nga ambasadorja dhe u dhan edhe pytit për cilat ju, media dhe pjestarë ishin të interesuar. Falem dirit edhe njëherë shiemi mas një javën e forumin e arshëm. Gjekupson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.